Ladies and gentlemen, Congressman Larson, that was fantastic. I don't know about y'all, but I want to hug that guy. Um, Ken was afraid that people wouldn't get it that I was dressed 80s. For anyone who knows me, I don't usually wear my hair this way, so I thought I'd just make that clear. This is 80s theme. Um, <laughs> so this next introduction is really personal for me. Um, I am one of the many, many people in this room that has been mentored by Congressman Jim Colby over the years. And I am honored to have learned from him as a colleague at McClarty Associates. Now, of course, Jim's leadership in Congress over 11 consecutive terms on issues of trade, foreign affairs is legend. But it's really his mentorship of so many of us that are here today that led Jim to be honored not once, but twice by WIDA, including with the Lifetime Achievement Award in 2006. Jim, it's my personal pleasure and my professional honor to call you to the stage to introduce the evening's second WIDA honoree. Thank you. Kelly, thank you very much. I, I, I do work with Kelly at uh, uh, McClarty Associates uh, from time to time and over the years. And I have to tell you, this is the way she comes every day to work. It's just like this. She's a fashion model every single day. Uh, <clears throat> Nelson wouldn't have it any other way. Kelly, thank you for the kind words and, and for the introduction. And thank you to all of you that are here tonight to participate in this annual event, this very special event for WIDA and for those that are being honored here tonight. Uh, it was mentioned earlier that I've gotten some of the awards from, from WIDA over the years. Uh, but you know, I'm, I'm one of those that I think had to kind of learn about trade. Some of us have to learn trade. We have to study economics. We have to see it. We have to be told about it. We have to kind of feel it along, those of us that live close to the border with Mexico, we can kind of feel some of that. There are others, though, that it just comes as part of their DNA. It's, they're born with it there. They know it from the beginning. It's inherently a part of who they are as part of their economic and personal philosophies. But even when it's people that either learn it or they inherently understand it, when they're in public office, they often have a hard time addressing it and promoting it. Because most of those in public in office, whether it's learned or by nature for them, they flinch when it's coming comes to acting about trade. Because they fear what the kind of response they're going to get from their districts at home, from the people that they represent. They may they may talk the talk, they may sometimes so they seldom walk the walk, but not this guy that I'm introducing here this evening, not Senator Jeff Flake. He has never flinched. He has never doubted. There's never been a question about where he stands on the issue of trade and its importance both to people and to our economy and to the American people, uh, na national security. He's never flinched from that. Even when confronted with determined opposition, as we often all are that serve in public office, we find that he has stood his, his point. He has stood firmly on it. And perhaps the best example of this would be the issue of trade sanctions with Cuba, when very few, when virtually no other Republican was calling for ending this, these sanctions, when was calling for letting the market economy work and, and allow trade with Cuba, he was there that was calling for this against the kinds of sanctions that we had with Cuba. So sometimes there are obviously more considerations, there are political considerations, there are moral considerations that come into our determination about what we do about trade. And Jeff understands that as well. But it's not whether it's just been Cuba it's been all the issues that we've had with trade that I've served with him in Congress, whether it's been the Central American Free Trade Agreement, the Columbia Trade Agreement, 
the South Korean trade agreement, all of these agreements over the years. He is the one that has stood there day after day promoting these, these agreements there. He's never doubted the economic arguments for open markets. And we've heard a lot about tonight here about jobs and how trade is important for jobs, and it is very important. But there's something else that sometimes gets left out of the equation that I want to mention tonight that Jeff understands inherently, and that is how trade is important for consumers, how consumers benefit from trade, how they get more choices in products, lower prices, and a better standard of living. So everybody, they, he understands that everybody in the end benefits from trade. So it's my great pleasure this evening to introduce an individual that I think has been a stalwart on trade. He has been a stalwart on trade and is, I think, one of the great individuals in the United States Congress over the years on this issue. No one that I can think of is more deserving of this leadership award than Senator Jeff, my friend, my colleague from Arizona, Senator Jeff Flake. Jeff. Thank you, Jim. You don't know what an honor that is to, to have an introduction by Jim Colby. You know, when I uh, got to the House, how many, 16, 17 years ago, Jim pulled me aside. He said, let's do immigration reform. It'll be fun. So <laughs> thanks a lot for that, Jim. <laughs> and then pretty soon, we had to protect uh, the Mexican trucker agreement within NAFTA. And so I just remember two green lights up there and 432 <laughs> red lights up there. Thanks a lot, Jim. <laughs> Jim knows a lot. I, I'm usually, I, I appreciate the introduction. I'm usually just introduced as the other senator from Arizona. <laughs> I'm used to that. And uh, just to tell you how used to that I am, I got on a plane the other day, took my normal spot going back to Arizona, 23D or whatever. And, uh, and most of the delegation was on there. McCain was up there in 8F or whatever. And so uh, it wasn't first class. But, but anyway, I, I sit down, and the woman right beside me is going like this. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. And I thought, yeah, yeah. And she goes, John McCain is on the flight. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, he's up there. I said, yeah. <laughs> she said, have you ever flown with him before? <laughs> Once or twice. And, uh, she said, you going to Arizona? Yeah. Are you a golfer? You look like a golfer. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I, I do. <laughs> she wasn't getting it. She said, <laughs> she said uh, do you fly to Washington often? I said, not as often as John McCain. <laughs> Still nothing. <laughs> Finally, the guy sitting in front of me leans back. He said, hey, lady, he's the other senator from Arizona. <laughs> she said, John Kyle? Really? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, anyway, <laughs> but I, I appreciate uh, getting this award tonight. You know, when the White House heard I was getting this award, uh, Donald Trump tweeted flake news. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, <laughs> but no. But to, to be serious for just a minute, I guess, <laughs> like Jim Colby, I've always thought that a rising tide lifts all boats. That's what trade does. I, I believe in the old adage that when goods cross borders, troops usually don't. That has been true for millennia, and I think it's still true today. <clears throat> Free trade expands freedom. It spurs competition. 
It rises product, it raises productivity and living standards among people in all countries, all countries that open themselves up to the international marketplace. Trade is not a zero-sum game. There are winners and there are winners. And that's how I feel about it. I've told this before, but I'm often reminded of the comment uh, made by Cal Dooley, our former colleague. Uh, after he left Congress, he was CEO of the Grocery Manufacturers Association. And uh, speaking about the need for trade, he said, uh, speaking at a trade event, he said, the head of the Grocery Manufacturers Association, like I said, he said, look to the left of you, look to the right of you, can we possibly sell more groceries to each other? <laughs> he said, we've got to trade. We've got to have, a, uh, we've got to have markets. Now, uh, by and large, trade has, uh, my work on trade has fallen into several broad areas, working to reduce barriers to trade, uh, seeking to hold the U.S. Uh, to our trade commitments, and trying to keep a lid on the predictable bashing that trade gets during every election cycle. It's always easier for any politician to point to a shuttered factory and scapegoat trade, uh, when, as we know, the, uh, the answer is far more complex. Automation, mechanization, uh, these things have, uh, have changed the economy. Trade has improved it. But I must say that, uh, Jim, uh, your timing is impeccable. You succeeded in making free trading Republicans mainstream just in time for the world to turn upside down in this <laughs> We now risk being about as popular as bell bottoms and parachute pants. But uh, be that as it may, we're going to carry you forward. Uh, Jim mentioned that I've uh, always believed that uh, we ought to trade with Cuba. I frankly just felt that if you really want to punish the Castro brothers, just export some spring breakers to Havana. <laughs> <laughs> that will finally, uh, I think they'll wave the white flag and say, that's enough, that's enough. But uh, while there are some Americans who don't want to see the importance of NAFTA uh, to the US, U.S. economy, let me just tell you how important it is to my state. Uh, we have 8 million Mexican shoppers who come across the border every day. Oh, I'm sorry, 8 million, spend $8 million Mexican shoppers coming across the border into Arizona every day. Our trade with Mexico and Arizona, $15 billion a year. Um, the imports, as we all know, with the global supply chain that we have, uh, a lot of what we import from Mexico is simply inputs into our own manufacturing process, which we then export. So this is, is very much uh, benefited us. It's very much benefited Mexico. As we know, there is a net flow southward of Mexican migrants lately, partly because their economy is better because of NAFTA. That's a good thing. More consumers for us, cheaper, better products for us as well. Um, this is a good thing. I've, uh, I've wanted to uh, highlight this. So uh, when Ambassador Lighthizer announced the administration's intent to enter into negotiations, I asked the people of Arizona to share their comments about NAFTA. As part of what I launched, uh, something called NAFTA 4AZ. I know that kind of sounds like a personalized license plate for a desert-themed monster truck, but, uh, but trust me, it works on social media. And we've had a lot of Arizonans across the state uh, in a multitude of industries, dairy farmers, call center employees, everyone, talking about the benefits to them of NAFTA. I like to say, with regard to trade overall, we represent less than 5% of the total population in the world we are less than 20% of the world's economic output and shrinking, not because we're shrinking, but the developing world is growing faster. If we don't trade, we don't grow. So my goal is to make NAFTA great again. I saw that on the bingo thing. <laughs> All right, somebody got it. All right. You're welcome, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> But in conclusion, uh, Milton Friedman once said that underlying most arguments against the free market is the lack of belief in freedom itself. I truly believe that. I truly believe that if we want to be freer, if we want to raise our own prosperity and grow our economy, 
we need to trade. Uh, I share Rick's, uh, and let me just say what a pleasure it has been to work with Rick Larson over the years, and uh, it, it's been great. I still bear the scars of many elbows during basketball at our four o'clock gym caucus that we had uh, for many years running there, but uh, thank you for your leadership in a hostile environment sometimes on trade. Thank you. Um, I would submit that underlying most arguments against free trade is a similar, similar lack of understanding of prosperity, how one achieves it for the U.S. and our partners in the global marketplace. Here's hoping that it doesn't uh, take long for us to teach others that lesson. Thank you for all the work that you do to promote free trade. Thank you for, you do, for all you do for this country and for our prosperity. Thanks for having me here.